Hey guys, thanks for joining. Uh, I, if this is your first time, I'm Shannon. I am redoing a, renovating a 27 foot 1970 Overlander International Airstream. I have dubbed her and registered her name as Mildred, which was my grandmother who loved to travel and often spent some summers in uh, RV, so I thought this was appropriate. She and I both have that same love. Anyway, this is going to be mine and my puppy dog's uh, home in the future. Now, she's only 23 feet inside, so it's it's tiny house living at its best. Um, I've always been obsessed with the tiny houses, so I just did, and re, wanting to restore homes. I just never thought it was going to be one on wheels. But anyway, I've gotten to the point I needed a little bit of a construction break, more like I needed a little bit of a wallet break. So today I am... Just having a calm day and working on finishing my window frame so I can get those put back in. Uh, I've got them all nice and cleaned up. I got the window screens on. Uh, this was a bigger project than it probably should be because of the lovely curved edges. Uh, it took multiple splicing, splining tools to get them in because of the, um, this is the narrowest spline I could get uh, and it's still pretty tight so I had to take a bigger more heavy duty one that is actually too wide to get in the groove but it got it started and then go back afterwards uh, with a smaller one and roll it back in also so anyway so I'm, I'm happy with how those have turned out considering it's the first time I've done that there's a lot of firsts for me on this project if you've been following my videos uh, but I figure that just shows that uh, with some basic construction um, knowledge anybody can do this anyway so this is what I'm doing once you've got the screens on the windows have these little uh, the spaces for the arms right and this is where where the space comes in that the um, that you raise and lower your windows uh, but there's no way to keep the mosquitoes out so you got all this lovely screening no way to keep the bugs out of there so what normally comes in this is uh, this kind of fuzzy stuff I think it's called a pile weather stripping uh, and then it's just the, the arm just kind of you know it kind of wraps around the arm as it's going up and down uh, and then keeps the bugs out for the most part uh, um, the rest of the times but that stuff is about 60 cents a foot um, which is fine uh, but I decided I wanted to do this today and I had not planned ahead so I didn't order it but I saw another option now when you're doing uh, nine of those you know, they, that can add up price wise because you need two feet per bar and there's two bars per window and then you've got six windows so that starts to add up right well when you're doing project on a budget like I am because the plan on this is to have no debt when I'm done or at least almost no debt somebody else uh, on Instagram that I follow is uh, and if you follow me on Instagram, uh, it's Gypsy Plant LVR. Uh, I also do some little cooking, vegan cooking videos. But if you follow me on there, sorry, I had to rescue some electrical things from the puppy. If you've been following the videos, you, uh, you know Daisy is often in the background. Anyway, back to what I was saying. If you follow me on Instagram it, or want to, it is Gypsy Plant LVR. Uh, I also do some vegan cooking videos, or used to, and we'll get back to doing those at some point. But uh, I will link on here and on there if I can find out who it was that I saw that did this. So what they did was they got this super inexpensive doormat. This thing is great. It's rubber on the back, and then it's got these little strips of looped um, material, and I'm pretty sure this is probably all plastic, and then it's flat on either side. So that's going to fit perfect, and it's about an inch wide, so it fits perfect in that little groove, right? It's on the back side of these. And so um, if you can see, let's see if you can see how that lays out. And then what I'm going to do is cut fix a little section. So I've cut here, I've cut a section out that's about a foot long, and I'm just cutting enough for each window um, at one time. And you're going to have a fuzzy edge to start when you do this. I'm do a little bit of adjustment here. You're going to have a fuzzy edge to do this when you start. So just go ahead and count that in. And then you want to go to the next, so that you have a flat side and a flat, you know, two flat sides with a fuzzy part in the center. I'm going to go ahead and cut for both windows. So I'm going to skip over 
And then I will go to the, um, I'll go one, two, three, four, four fuzzy sections in and to the flat, next flat one. And that'll give me enough width for uh, both arm spaces. And it's about a foot to 13 inches long. This mat cost about $8 as opposed to what the other's gonna, other would cost it, uh, you know, three fifty per window. And at four foot by three foot, because that's the size they had, you could obviously could get a smaller one. Uh, I'm good. I can do this, screw it up, start over, whatever, multiple times, and still have probably still have enough of it. Uh, probably a, this looks like I'm gonna have a three foot by two foot piece section left to make a doormat with. So I've got my piece cut. Sorry about the sunshine action in the background. It's a beautiful day today, but it's uh, it's evening time, so it's the reflections hit me. So I've got this piece. It's about one foot by, I'm going to call that three inches, roughly. And then I'm going to go and trim down to what I need for a single strip. I kind of got a giggle the other day when I realized that... Because I'm outside, I'm not doing a workshop situation. Um, I set up a sawhorse table situation in the beginning of this process, and it just dawned on me for literally seven months, the top of my sawhorse is Mildred's old floor. So she's been with me through the whole process. I thought that was kind of fun. Anyway, okay. So I've got the first strip. Go ahead and cut and get the other one ready. Now I'm not gonna split this down the center. I did on the first one and I decided it's easier to line up the center after the fact than before. So I have my piece, right? So it's flat on this side, fuzzy in the center, flat on the other side. Let's turn my window over. I'm using Gorilla Glue to hold it in place. You mainly need it at the top and the bottom. I'm putting it, of course, on the sides as well, but mainly at the top and the bottom because this is going to be sandwiched between the uh, the main window frame and uh, this outer frame. So it's going to hold it in place for the most part, but just, you know, just for safety reasons, or just for the sake of do overkill, put a little bit in there. If you use your Gorilla Glue, you know that Super glue has got nothing on this stuff. And whatever you put in there, it is not going anywhere, regardless of what surface it's glued to. Uh, it also expands, at least this version does. So uh, I think they all do, but this version does. I'm just using the, uh, this is the white. I have clear. Um, white, of course, doesn't matter on this. I can see it. And I like the fact um, that this is black because the new the replacement uh, brackets that I bought to go inside the the windows or the arms I had to replace pretty much all of them because they were broken at the bottom but the original ones were white and they uh, had yellowed and gotten kind of a bad weird color so I, at the time all they had available was black um, and I think they have white ones now but that's actually perfect because this is black, so it'll look like all one piece. So I really like that idea. So I place it in its space. Once I get in spot, I have to trim it off at the bottom where it curves. And then to hold it in place, you can weight it down with a book if you want. That's what I did on the first one, but I have found that this seems to be working just fine. So I just took some painter's tape to tape it in place. And kind of tuck down along your edge to make sure that outer edge is angling down because it is uh, raised a little bit because of trying to get it around that um, lifted part, okay? So I'll do, I'll do that on both sides. I need to show you that again. But as you can see, then it's just taped in place, all right? From the 
front, it looks like that. So that's going to have the fuzzy edge there. Sorry, bouncing around there. And then this one had been um, on for a little bit, so I went ahead and cut it. But I just go through, find your center, and cut straight through. And then that'll give the arm a nice smooth place to run between. And it'll only be raised um, in those two spots. So that's what it'll look like. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. A little quick, easy how-to. Uh, if you are interested, just hit uh, like, subscribe, and share. And uh, hit that little bell up in the corner. So if you want to make sure you don't miss any of the new videos when they come out, I put them out every week or so, depending on how projects are running and timing. But um, love to see you again, and be sure and send me any emails if you have any questions or write in the comments. I'll be happy to help you out with anything I have learned so far. Thank you very much. Bye. Remember when I said I was going to have enough left over probably for a doormat? Well, guess what? I needed a new step cover. Now I have a new step cover. And there's still enough that when that gets dirty, I'll rip it off and do another one. So just literally that. Thanks.